All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Monday, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, and I'll be your moderator. We're excited to welcome back Dr. Daniel Vasquez as our speaker, as he'll be reviewing universal adhesives and proper adhesion techniques. At any point during the webinar, if you have questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll get to those live at the end. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation, live or on demand. And this webinar is sponsored by Carare. So with that, I will throw it to Dr. Vasquez. Hey, thank you, Adam. Uh, that, that, that was a very nice introduction. So let me, let me change my picture and put myself right here. Welcome everybody. And um, uh, thank you for spending uh, this hour with me uh, on this Monday. Uh, I'm, I'm in San Diego, so this is Pacific time. For me, it's three o'clock. And for many of you guys, it would be four, five, five o'clock. Uh, in six in the, uh, in, the, in the eastern side of the country. Today, um, I'm going to talk about uh, adhesive, uh, about bonding, the secrets, uh, how you know, we can make adhesive dentistry uh, more predictable. Um, but before that, let me, let me get an intro video of my office and then we'll keep going. Unfortunately, we only have 60 minutes to talk about adhesives and uh, it's not enough. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using clinical cases. I'm gonna help show how I did at the office and hope you enjoy my presentation. Okay. I am in the city of Oceanside. Um, my office is 95% digital. Uh, um, I love technology. And it's one of the things I'll be talking today uh, about the technology that is used in all these composites and adhesives. But I've been a ceramic dentist for over 14 years. So I do practice same day dentistry. Um, I'm a beta tester, trainer, and mentor for Dentistry Sharona. And uh, one of the things that I do is help dentists become more efficient with their beautiful dentistry. And uh, uh, let me go back in here myself. Okay, hold on. Give me one second. I do believe that I did a mistake in here. Just give me one second. Okay. I delete uh, um, a file that I had in here, but I need to correct it really quick. So give me just a little technical issue here that I can fix really quick. Okay, so now I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Well, you know, it's um, again, I've been uh, a dentist for 30 years. I practice in San Diego. Um, and uh, I met my wife in dental school and we, we talk a lot about how dentistry has, you know, the evolution of dentistry. And I do remember back then for those that have been practicing dentistry for more than 30 years, when we uh, first uh, start using our composite, it was paste and paste. We used to mix it and, and, you know, do it like a class three a four or five. And then we mix the paste, we put a molly strip, we put it in there, we, and then we hold it and then it will just, uh, 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 it will get hard by itself. And then we move to something more sophisticated. Now we have uh, the composite that is just like here. We put a light and these lights, they were like guns, like hair dryer guns, correct? And today we have this little tiny little pans, very powerful like here, you know, uh, devices that we have today. But uh, moving from the, the metal to the composite, and 14 years ago, I became a, a CADCAM dentist and I moved from, mint, from PFMs and gold and to completely uh, metal-free dental office. And one of the first things that I experienced as a CADCAM dentist in chairside dentistry, I was having a lot of sensitivity, lots, lots of sensitivity. And, and, and I started thinking, why, why is this happening? What am I doing wrong? Okay, 
Uh, here, uh, when I have uh, this X-ray, uh, you can see on, on the top, okay, up there, we have these crowns, PFMs, where we have uh, failing uh, or uh, we have recurring decay underneath the crown bed. And this always happens interproximately. And I noticed with years, sensitivity, the, the failing of the restoration, the failing of the, uh, of the composites. And then, you know, this is, this is today, if you can see on, on the X-ray on the bottom, we can see how we seal the dentin with one layer, how we use a buildup, and how we have the ceramic covering the tooth, completely sealing the tooth, having absolutely no problems. And the most beautiful thing that today, these materials, uh, they're different, their radiopacity is completely different. So you can see the different layers that you're building one on top of the other one. And when you take these beautiful x-rays, you can see your work and you go, wow, that, that, that is really beautiful. And the nicest thing is when the patient doesn't say nothing, but when the patient is really happy, they walk out and they have absolutely no pain silver after your dental appointment. And then you are a big hero. So one of the things that I noticed is post-operative sensitivity. Uh, and as soon as I start moving from many different companies, because it's there's something, something uh, wrong. I'm doing something wrong. This, this is not about the materials. I've been doing now, he's a dentist for so many years. And, and about 10 years ago, I was mixing. I was mixing matching, you know, materials. Of, uh, the adhesive from one company, the, the composite from another company. And until five years ago, when, when I got into, uh, I, I, I started working with Kurai products, I noticed that if you stay with the same family and, the, and use the same chemical base that, every, that the, the company use, you're gonna start having less problems. Now, the other thing is I noticing I have, I'm having bonding failures and uh, let's speak about composites. You know, it's uh, having patients having lots of sensitivity and also on crowns, you know, when the crowns, they come off and, and then you see what's going on on the crown. Okay, well, I see that the, 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 the cement is attached to the crown and the tooth is clean. And other times I see the cement attached into the tooth and the crown is clean. So you start seeing all these failures and then it's when you start asking your question, what am I doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? So tonight, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share with you all the different techniques and the step-by-step -step that you have to do to avoid those problems. But the most important is because we do lots of crowns and lots of indirect, indirect restorations, we have to start thinking about bonding and not bonding into the uh, enamel because etching enamel, bonding enamel is something that is really old. It's, this, this, is, this comes from uh, the 1955s with Dr. Wenakoro when he came with this uh, groundbreaking news about etching enamel, and that was back in the 55. But however, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Fushiyama, uh, he's a doctor in Japan. He came with a book of the concepts and of the new concept of op operative dentistry, where he was working with Kurai Nerotaki, developing the first adhesives to bond into dentin. So back again, back in the 78s is when this happened. So I started thinking still five years ago, I was ignorant that we can bond into dentin. I only, I, I only thought, okay, we etch enamel. You cannot etch dentin, it's, it's not possible, okay? Because you're not gonna get And uh, uh, many times uh, when I was buying materials, I was listening to the sales rep. Oh, Dr. Vasquez, this is a great material. This is the best thing in the world. Uh, this is gonna uh, uh, eliminate all your problems with sensitivity uh, or uh, failing crowns. Trust me, this is the one. But things keep happening. Why? Because I was doing something wrong. I did not understand the real concept on working with into the dentin and working with the enamel. But there's many studies now 
uh, many, many studies out there uh, uh, that speaks about now the, the sealing of the dentin. Uh, the, the immediate dentin is sealed, uh, like on this one, the, uh, the, the microtensile uh, base strength, correct? Uh, how can we get more tensile strength you know, with these materials? And you can see on, on, on this one that uh, using uh, an, uh, a clear field SC protect, you know, you can get so much bonding and strength and, and into the crown that, you know, literally that thing is going to be part of the tooth. Again, studies and more studies uh, we, can, we, can, we can get, but everything happened until I met uh, Dr. Pascal McGann that he was talking about immediate dentina seal. Uh, I went to a presential to, him, to, to see him and it just completely changed the way that I started practicing dentistry. Because now I understand that if you seal the dentin, either you're doing direct or indirect, you're, 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 you're in your way to success. Why? Because not only you know that restoration is gonna, is gonna last a long time, the patient's gonna be protected. And, and the thing is, there's a phrase that, that I just hate when the people come back to the office. I have associates uh, that work in my practice. I don't have the issue myself right now with sensitivity, but I do have associates. The, the patient come back, they see me and they tell me, Dr. Vasquez, my tooth was fine until I got a filling. Now I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't do nothing because it hurts. And then the next thing we find ourselves doing is adjusting the occlusion that I don't believe is that's a problem. I believe the problem is that the base, the pulp of floor is not plastified, it is not sealed, okay? So there's a space in between them. So when the patient's chewing down and, and the dentin is not sealed, the patient's gonna have a lot of sensitivity. So in my office, what I do when these cases come back into my office, I do remove the old composite and we place a new one and I follow step-by-step, step, you know, the, um, uh, the immediate dentin sealed. And once I know my dentist is completely sealed, I can send the patient home, even without a composite on the top. I know my patient is going to be completely fine. So in conclusion, we know that, that doing uh, sealing the dentin uh, is going to help us uh, protect the nerve. Uh, we can have less sensitivity, but also is going to give us more bond strength. So going back with Dr. Pascal Manier, uh, he on this article, he collected more than 30 articles, put them all together, uh, get all the data and came with the results that uh, uh, there's, uh, that the best success in, in aesthetic dentistry and using a uh, composite is using uh, or sealing the dentin. Other thing that I learned from him uh, as a CAD CAM dentist that I am, and I do same day dentistry, is the elevation of the margins. We do have a lot of patients, they do have loss of decay on the interproximal. And the problem with this is it, again, is if we do not have a complete dry area where we're gonna seal our material, we're gonna still be having the same issues with old dentistry with PFM using just cement, setting the crown, the interproximal area, we still have moisture. So that's where we're gonna get most of our failures. And take a second and think, everybody think. When I'm taking off a crown or I'm doing a diagnosis, where, where is the decay? It is in the buckle, it's in the lingual, or it's always it's interproximal. And I will say the majority or a big percentile of the times it will be happening interproximally because that area it was not dry when we sit the crown and with time, saliva started getting in there, started creating crowns, uh, started creating decay. So the same thing, the concept of the immediate dentina, uh, or elevation of the margin, when we elevate the margin and we are able to seal completely that interproximal area and it's completely dry, all we have to do is build it with composite and then we're gonna seal our crown on top of the composite. It's not going to happen to the tooth, it's going to happen at the base of the composite on your, on your margin. So I've been practicing doing that more often. And uh, I will tell you, once you start doing that, the success rate on your crowns is going to be long. Why? Because you're not gonna have 
the, the carries underneath the crown. And uh, I know that restoration is completely sealed. This is an example of my, uh, one of my cases. This patient had an existing crown. Uh, they, had, they did a root canal on it because it had lots of decay underneath the crown. Once I removed the crown, I did the elevation to the margin. And you can see on the edge and the bottom, how thick is that elevation? That's probably about two and a half millimeters of composite. But I will tell you that is not only looks good, that crown has been, I did that crown more than 10 years ago. And I'm so happy, so happy that, uh, that uh, this, the new techniques that we've been learning you know, with uh, like these uh, uh, scientists like Dr. Pascal that he lives, you know, uh, learning and, and, and building new strategies and new techniques, training materials and sharing with us everything that he's doing. You know, I, I've been practicing many of his techniques and I will tell you that uh, he has many articles out there that you can learn the immediate edema sealed and also the um, elevation of the margins that I do enjoy a lot. So going from family to family of composites and adhesives, again, about five years ago, I came and I started working with, with Kurai. Uh, today is Kurai Norataki. And they are the pioneers and literally with uh, bonding into dentin. Uh, the, clear, the clear feel in the Panavia family uh, uh, they've been they is, they've been in the market for so many years. Again, you know, Korea is one of the pioneers in the of dentistry. But one of the things that I do enjoy working with this with today's materials is how they add in technology. You know, they 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 are the founders. They are the people who develop the MDP. MDP that is what's going to give us the bond into the dentin. And uh, but to every cement or adhesive, they've been adding more technology so it can be easy for us. For instance, uh, there's three uh, uh, graphs right here. Well, MDP, the dual monomer technology plus the LCSI. I'll explain what is that. I love it. Okay, stay with me. I'm gonna be going now with clinical cases. You will enjoy this one. The MDP with MI, I love that one too. And the MDP with MDPB. Uh, those are the adhesives that I use today, and I will share with you uh, which ones, how, when, and, and how. So we have, uh, on this family right now, we have here the clear field, the, the universal bond quick is something that I use for every single crown that I do or any indirect restoration that I do in my practice. Uh, we have also the clear field SC protect, um, I enjoy working with that one. And most of the times I will be using that when my decay is far down, okay, on the interproximal, interproximal or any area that is too far down, close to the bone, I'll be using this because this has one property that'll be talking to you, what is that, that property? I use the clear foam majesty flow, uh, great material. That is, as to, I use my adhesives, I always going to use a flowable and I'm going to put a, a I'm going to use it as a liner. Okay, so we can completely protect all the dentin. And in this case, I'm showing the DC core buildup. Also, uh, for uh, my crown cementations, I use the Panavia V5 and also the Panavia SA Universal Cement. Two phenomenal cements. Uh, one, I use it specifically Panavia V5. I only use it specifically for aesthetic cases. And the Panavia is a universal cement. I use it for the rest, for any only only uh, crowns, bridges. That's what I'm gonna be using for bonding my inter restorations. Also, we have in the family, we have a katana block that we will not be talking about that one today. And one more thing, Kurai uh, 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 just, uh, uh, Kurai they just came with this, uh, one shade, you know, uh, intelligence or simplification composite. So that's the that's an universal meaning that you can use it on an on a two shade A one A two A three, and the restoration will actually the composite will get the color of the two. So that's kind of cool. I have a, a quick case that I'm going to be showing to you that actually I did that today. So this is freshly, you know. 
quick video that I made for you guys so you can see in a simple way how you know it does get the color of the tooth and I do really enjoy working with it. So let's talk about our first clinical case. This is uh, little Savannah. Uh, uh, Savannah, she broke her two front teeth and uh, they put some composites, the composites, they fell off. But one of the things that I noticed after I did my exam, uh, the tooth number eight or tooth number one, one for some of you, uh, or eight uh, had in, uh, already a radial lucency at the apex. So we proceed, the next thing we proceed is to do the root canal. Now for this, for this case, these are the materials that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the, the clear field universal bond uh, and that's gonna be a use in, that's my adhesive that I'm going to be using with my Panavia ASA Universal Cements and to do my buildup. So the first thing we do, we proceed, we do the root canal. And uh, once we do the root canal, the next thing I'm going to take myself off here. We're going to do, uh, we're going to place a post. Um, uh, personally, I do not use that many posts in my practice. Uh, I try to avoid posts. Actually, Pascal Menier, uh, he has a great uh, course and article where he talks about posts versus non-posts. And he says the non-posts will protect the tooth uh, better. But in this case, I'll be using the posts. Uh, right now, what I'm doing, I'm using the clear seal universal bone quick. I scrub it into the canal. Uh, I apply for 30 seconds. I scrub it really good very nicely. Now let's talk about this uh, clear field universal bond before we keep going. Um, what I like from what I like from this material is that um, there's no waiting, meaning uh, you can uh, it's so quick, you know, when, when you work with it, uh, it is so quick, it will not compromise anything. So yes, make sure that you that the area is completely dry, there's no blood. And then you apply this, you know, just make sure you clean very nicely before you, know, you rinse, you know, with water, clean everything. And before you use the, the adhesive, once you do that, you apply it, just scrub it for 30 seconds, okay? And, and then, uh, uh, then you, you, you like cure it. Also, it comes in a single bottle, okay? It comes in a single bottle, but the design of the bottle, I really, I really like the, the design of the bottle. So let, let, me, let, me, let me do this. Let me get a little... I'm gonna get a black glove right now because I have the bottle here with me. What I like from this bottle that hopefully, you know, let me, this message goes to all my friends in Japan of Korean Otaki that all their bottles should be in this presentation. Why? Because it is easy to open and to, the, and to dispense, okay? You see that? Go, it clicks and you close it. So it's really nice. Uh, I hate the other bottles because, you know, the drops just come, you know, off of it so, 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 uh, so much, and, and, and when the assistants they put in like one, two, three drops, that I think that's too much. So on this one, you know, the way the drops they come out, you'll see it's it's, it's a very very well designed of a bottle, and also it has this new uh, amide chemistry that it rapidly uh, permeates the dentin enamel, which eliminates waiting time. Uh, so once you put it in there, you like cure it, and, and you're ready to proceed. Okay. Again, it's more hydrophilic, is, has less fluid absorption, is higher polymerization, and higher flexure of strength. Again, this is a combination of the MDP that it bonds into the dentin and also the, um, the, the amid that it gives you the, uh, it gives you uh, the time to work faster. And also, uh, you can do any technique that you want. You can just self etch it, just apply it, you know, 30 seconds on the dent and the enamel, okay? Uh, or uh, you can select etched around the enamel, or you can do total etch. You can do any of those three. Now, when it comes to etching, um, I like to etch. I still believe in etching. Um, I do a lot of selective etching and I do some of uh, total edge. Uh, the total edge will be used when I do uh, an aesthetic case, when I'm doing veneers, when I'm doing crowns on the interiors, I will definitely do the total edge. Um, in some areas uh, of the posterior, I will only do select, selective etching. 
okay? And in other cases, I only use a, you know, the self etching, but uh, definitely I'll say 50, 60% of my time, I'll be selective in total etching uh, the restoration. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the, we're gonna use a clear fill, uh, a DC core plus, and uh, we already apply the, the clear fill into the canal. So do the next thing, we're going to place the clear fill DC, this is a thin tip that is gonna go into the canal. And another of the things that I like from the, the Kurai family is that all these composites, does, they do not create bubbles. Uh, there's so many uh, syringes composite that, that once you're placing it, they create these bubbles and, and they're just so annoying. But using these uh, composite, I find myself not experiencing bubbles in when I'm applying the, the composite. So when it's, it's applied, what, the other thing that I really enjoy is that the, when I'm preparing the tooth uh, and I have to, and I'm cutting now the, the composite, you know, it cuts very nice. It's, very, it's, pretty, it's pretty strong. So uh, it, it's almost like dentin. So it's like uh, when you cut in, it's going to be nice and smooth. Once we do that, I will proceed to take my impressions. Uh, this is going in our office. Everything is chersite. So we'll be taking the impression. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Ceric Prime Scan. Uh, I love this uh, scanner, by the way, it's pretty accurate. And uh, I do the designs. Once the reasons are done, down the top we have, we have the prep, and then we have uh, the, uh, the minimal uh, thickness. We have enough ceramic. And then on the bottom, on here in the bottom, we have the design. So it's kind of it's nice. So next thing we're going to do, we're gonna select the color of a restoration. I am not a lithium to silica guy in the front teeth, meaning I don't use Emacs on my front teeth, uh, unless we have a patient that is extremely bruxure or uh, uh, we have a huge clincher, but even like that, I will even think about it twice. I love using Philopasic. I use, a, I like the glass ceramic in my front teeth because that's going to give me a beautiful restoration. Now, uh, once we do the design, we select our, uh, our, our blocks, uh, then we pick the right color, then the next thing, we send them to the milled. Once you're milled, uh, I don't spend or waste my time on the software trying to do the, the, um, the anatomy. I like to get my analog uh, handpiece and give the shape, form, and texture into the uh, into the crown, even I put it into the patient's mouth so it gives little more details and then we proceed to do, to finalize uh, uh, getting any scratches of the ceramic. And then we will use uh, stains and glaze. Most of the times I will stain and glaze my restorations. In this case, we're using uh, the CZR Serbian from, from, from Kurenera Donkey. So we're gonna add some stains, we're gonna fire it and then we are going to be using glaze on top of the stain. So we protect the stain for a long time. Yeah, it takes a little bit more time, but remember working in the front teeth is patient's life smile. So we have to take our time. Once we do that, we gonna try these restorations. Once they're tried, they fit beautiful then we are going to proceed on bonding these restorations. Now, this is where the bonding is very important. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the 5% hydrofluorosic acid and we, because this is glass ceramic, we need to scrub it for 60 seconds inside the intaglio, 60 seconds. Remember when I said to you uh, that sometimes we find when we have a crown that fails, we find the composite on the tooth and it's not in the ceramic? It's because this step, it was not done right. This step of using either etching or sandblasting different type of restorations, it is not done properly. And then other times, we now is the time that we have to put the sealing on it. 
And then if we don't put it the right way, or if we forget to put it on, then is where we find, we find ourselves with the other problem. Clear feel universal bond quick. We're gonna, again, is the design and the way it dispenses is really nice. Again, you know, nice drop, that's plenty enough for a tooth. And then we're gonna move forward. On this case, we're gonna, uh, I love using rubber dam for delivery, but uh, uh, also the, the object gate is another option that I have. Um, the, what I like from the rubber dam is the adhesive doesn't get into the tissue. Uh, I will be showing you a couple cases with rubber dam. And, but in this case, we proceed to do it without, uh, without rubber dam. Using the object gate, we still, you know, we, we uh, obtain a good uh, area of, uh, over the tooth is completely dry. So we can apply that and remember, uh, using the, the clear field quick, we have the, the amide on it that is going to help us to work pretty fast. Again, this is the cement we're going to be using, the Penny Heavy SA Cement Universal. Now, remember when I said uh, the, um, uh, that I will be explaining the MDP and the LCSI? Okay, the LCSI, it is the actual, uh, uh, is the actual uh, saline, okay? So what I did, what they did, they mix them, they put them together, okay? So uh, the ceiling metals, uh, the, the ceiling is for metal zirconia for, uh, or any buildup. And what they did, they put that material into the syringe. So now when we are using Panavia SA Universal Cement, there's no need for, uh, uh, for to put saline into the integrity of the crown. So if you're working with glass ceramic, it needs 60 seconds of, 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 of acid. If you're using uh, lithium desilicate like Emacs, it needs only 20 seconds, okay? If you're using zirconia, you just sandblast the zirconia, that's it, okay? There's no reason to put nothing else. If you're using a composite, you sandblast the composite, and then you apply the composite syringe into the integral and that will bond beautifully, okay? Now, uh, what is the futures of the Panavia SA? Uh, it has great futures. One is dual cure, uh, has flow release. That's one of the properties that I'm always looking into the adhesive that I'm using. But most of the, the ones that we use in the family of the Clearfield and Panavia, they have flow release. It's, uh, uh, it's an universal adhesion to every surface and uh, restor restorations for dentistry for everything. Uh, the new LC, SI sealing technology that it comes together inside, you know, in, 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 the, in, in the syringe, eliminates the sealing for sequina primers. Uh, it has your original MDP adhesive, adhesive of, uh, monomer, the meaning that it will bond to dentin without a problem. Uh, room's temperature storage, three years shelf life, uh, you know, I know that the company promotes this, but I think they should take this out. If you have a syringe that is gonna be, is gonna be in your shelf for three years, it's because you're not doing enough crown sole or, or indirect restoration. So that is not good. It should be just, you know, you should be buying many of these, you know, you know per year, okay? Easy cementation technique. That's one of the most beautiful things that I love from this cement. From this cement. Uh, and the cleanup, it's just crazy. The cleanup, it's just so easy, so nice, okay? So <clears throat> let me take off myself. So you can see here, now we already, uh, we keeping the area nice and clean and dry. So now uh, we're gonna start loading our uh, final restorations. It's been loaded. Restorations been already treated, glaze, stain, and we, Put, uh, we etch the integrity for 60 seconds. We place our uh, universal bond quick into the tooth. Now we're going to place restorations. We're gonna hold them and we're gonna tack cure for three seconds. And facial, okay. Three seconds on lingual, one, two, Three, one, two, three. And then the next thing, once 
the the resin is on this gel stage, we're going to eliminate the excess. Now pay attention to this. How easy. Always when I when when I'm removing the cement from my cases and this is happening, I just love it. Because there's great cements out there, phenomenal cements out there, but they're very hard. Very, very hard. And one of the things that you find yourself when you're doing uh, church site dentistry, and, and when you are new in church site dentistry and new with, uh, with adhesive dentistry, uh, you're going to find yourself always finding, removing the excess of cement. But on this, on this video, you can see how nice and easy it comes off. So all the kids are going to be showing pretty much you're going to see the same thing. So cleaning and uh, we're ready to have her picture. And this is the final result on the same day. You can pay attention. Tissue is very nice. The crown, they, they look pretty much identical to her natural dentition. Today, we have the power to mimic mother nature. So not only, I used to say the prep is very important. Uh, impression is very important. But also you can have a prep, but you can have a very bad bonding system and everything's gonna go down because you know, your, your beautiful restoration is going to fail. But once you have all three dial in, good prep, good impression and good adhesive dentistry, you are going for a long-term you know, success with your restorations and you will retire and you're not gonna get, you're not gonna do nothing to these restorations. Now this is uh, Penny Baby 5, that's the other cement that I use. I only use exclusive this material for my aesthetic cases. Uh, this is a very strong uh, cement. Uh, this is V5 because it's the version five of the, uh, of the Panavias. Uh, again, uh, uh, Kurai always is innovating, is moving forward, is bringing new technology, new, new, uh, new science behind other products, and and all they're doing is trying to make everything more simple for us. Now, uh, on the tooth, we are going to apply uh, uh, the the primer on the tooth. Also, is a uh, self edge. Uh, uh, adhesive, you don't have to total edge. Again, you, you can uh, just use that, you know, just the, the soft edge, you can select the edge or you can total edge. But again, in the interiors, in my personal practice, I will uh, definitely do total edge. And also uh, it, you're gonna use a combination of the Clear Fear Ceramic Primer. They'll be talking about that right now. The, the Clear Fear Primer, uh, that is the saline that, uh, for my opinion, my humble opinion, there will be is the best or two of the best. Okay, uh, there's another one that I do like a lot, but uh, right now for uh, for the last five years I've been using only Clear Ceramic Primer, and it's very good and it's for every single material that is used in the dental uh, in the dental market: lithium disilicate, zirconia. Silicate with ceramic, metal, composites, lithium silicates, that is not in, in, in the list. So it has, uh, uh, it does work for every single material in the dental market. And also it has the MDP, something very powerful because we know this is gonna help bond into the dentin. And this is a case that I'm gonna be presenting. This is my Panavia B5 clinical case. This is a young, good looking kid that he doesn't like the diastema on his front teeth. He's been given the option of putting uh, bondings and he refused, he wants something that is more permanent. Uh, he visited my office and I offer him, you know, we can do some veneers on your front teeth. And then we, he, pro, he say, yes, we proceed on prepping, try to do as, as, as much as possible. Now, um, when I do reduction, I'm always thinking on the restoration that I'm going to be placing. These preps are not crown preps. These are not veneer preps. These are craniers. 
Uh, it's not a, it's not a crown. It's not a it's not a veneer prep. It is a crannier prep. So right now, as you can see, for thir for uh, 10, 15 seconds, I'm gonna etch the the enamel because right here we have more enamel than actual dentin. So we once we bond these restorations, they will be there for for a long, long, long time. You know, and my question to you for the end, you think that it's necessary to total edge the tooth structure? Um, that's, that, that's a good you know, question for discussion. But as you can see, as soon as I blow air, uh, you can see the frostness of the, you know, the enamel. So that means we have plenty of enamel. Now we are applying the, the primer, the Panibabify primer. In this case, we use a rubber dam. The rubber dam, I love it because as you can see, all the soft tissues completely uh, protect. We change the color light so we have more time to work with the, with the material. Uh, Penibia B5 is a dual cement, so it has catalysts on it, meaning that it will dry by itself. It will get hardened by itself. You don't need the light. Uh, so I don't use on this case the light until I make sure that both restorations are sit properly. I, I eliminate as much as much as possible of the of the composite, the existing composite that we have. Make sure in the right position. Then I tack three seconds in every single tooth. Facial lingual. Uh, I use a 12 blade scalpel to eliminate the excess that happens to all when I'm working on veneers. Once I do that, make sure that there's no cement left. So I use a scaler, make sure everything's nice and clean. Um, I love brownies. Brownies from the company Shofu. I love them because uh, uh, not only it can reduce excess of cement, it does polish and leaves a very smooth, smooth surface. So it's something that I, uh, the brownie is something that I like using. Once I finish doing that, uh, there might be a little bit of cement, you know, left in the tooth and on the ceramic on the facial. I always gonna get a little twister and just go and uh, and eliminate that. Once we do that, we remove the rubber dam. And that is uh, immediately after removing the rubber dam, this is the two restorations. Uh, as you can see, the tissue looks very nice. It was not damaged. Even with the rubber dam, it was not damaged. A little bleeding, kind of normal. But this is how he looks. This is the before and after. And... Uh, it does make a big difference. It makes a big difference. Uh, this, uh, this kid was very, very happy. Now, uh, this, uh, I'm gonna present this other case. This uh, case is we have lots, we have lots of decay. We don't have much to structure. So I need something stronger uh, than uh, a stronger adhesive that is going to have properties of uh, protecting uh, the deep area, so releasing fluoride, uh, where it can kill bacteria, and that's where uh, the Clearfield FC Protect comes in, very handy. So um, on this case, I did total edge. I don't have enough uh, enamel, so I'm going to total edge the inside. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the uh, the primer first, and then I'm going to put the bond. So the first one you scrub for 30 seconds, then. You, you rinse with, you know, you, you uh, put some air, you bring the, the second one, the bond, and then you like here. Uh, I'm using right now the clear, clear field majesty flow to build up the interproximal area of the, AJ, the adjacent by cuspid. As you can see, I'm finishing very nicely that contact because now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place my, 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 um, the sectional uh, uh, matrix bands, and I'm going to apply again the uh, bond. I'm going to like here, and then with the clear from adjusted flow, I'm going to seal. As you can see, we have 
completely, it's completely dry. There's no moisture. And what I'm doing, I built the walls with a clear film majesty flow. And just right in the center, I'm going to just fill that with the clear field DC core plus. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna proceed to prep. Yes, as you can see, I am prepping with rubber dam. Can you do that? <laughs> the answer, of course, is yes. Because I, my, the position of the rubber dam is all the way down to the sulcus of the, of the, of the tooth. And uh, I'm going to be able to be and get almost to the CJ. So yes, you can, you can, you can do that. I, I scanned the tooth. Now I'm ready to bomb my restoration. I use the bomb quick followed by the Panavia ASA Summit Universal. We clean our exhausts, three seconds tack. We put the floss, make sure there's no excess, nothing in between. Take your time removing all the composite and look at that. That looks beautiful. Same day crown uh, is staining glaze. And uh, um, actually is not bad at all, okay, for, for same day dentistry. Contacts are perfect and, and the adaption is, is, is really good. So again, in this case, I, I did use both adhesives. I use the, 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 uh, the Quick Universal and also I use the uh, uh, SE Protect. As you protect for down all the way down to the floor of the, of the tooth, seals, floor release. Uh, 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 it has the property of, 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 of killing bacteria. I will show you in a couple of slides right now how it works. And then once we do that, we do the buildup, we prep, we bond uh, using the bond quick and the Panavia SA cement for nice cleanup. So uh, the, the clear flow AC protect it has the MDP monomer that is the antibacterial, meaning uh, it will protect against bacteria and the fluid release, the MDP uh, is going to seal completely the base and trust me, it will, you know, that seal will never break. You, it just gives you the comfort. Uh, will I use the, uh, the, the, the bunk quick in there, um, the universal bunk quick? Yes, if I did not have the uh, SE Protect, yes. But because I do use the SE Protect and I have it handy all the time, I have the Bond Quick and the SE Protect always next to each other because I'm going to make the decision, depends how deep it's decay, which one I'm going to be using. Uh, this is another case. Um, let's see if it works. This video was not being nice with me. Okay, let's skip that video. So now we have another case. This is a case that I told you guys that I did this morning. Uh, I think this is a very cool case because this is, uh, this is composites and I'm using uh, the clear field majesty uh, universal. That, that's the one that I use. So let's, let's place this video. So I already eliminate the decay because I did not remove so much dentin, then I will Edge in this case, I will edge all dentin and the, uh, the enamel. I will dry very nicely. I will apply the bond quick. I will light cure. And then I'll use my Panavia Majesty Flow just to create a thin, thin layer in the floor so I can plastify the floor. Then I'm gonna bring with the Majesty Universal. I'm gonna apply it. In a packet. This comes in two presentations. It comes in the um, it comes on the uh, paste and flowable. But th uh, in this case, definitely I'm going to use the paste because I like to carve. Once I finish doing both of them, I'm going to get my finishing burrs and clean all the excess of the composite. Make sure everything's fine. But look how nice the composite blended into the tooth. So literally, 
I'm very happy using the, uh, the universal composite. I've been doing it, using it a lot for all my uh, direct restorations. And, and the nice thing is that you don't have to have lots of inventory. So if you are a dentist that don't like to have lots of inventory, this is a composite for you. I do have the whole gamma of all the shades and colors of the, of the Majesty Aesthetic on, on, on packables because uh, when I'm doing front teeth, the video that didn't play was a beautiful video where I'm restoring a front tooth. It looks beautiful restored. Why? Because I can use different shades and, 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 and uh, I use paste and then I use flowable so I can blend it and make it look like a natural tooth. And I believe I have one, one last case. Uh, this case is, uh, uh, I'm just going to present it. It's a simple case. It's a removal crown, replace a PFM for a, a ceramic crown. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go through the whole process uh, and how we're going to bond it. Okay. So here, uh, we're going to scan because, uh, uh, again, we do everything in our office. Uh, we with, with scanners and mill machines, something that uh, if you're looking into getting into this ministry, it's, it's fun. It's really, it's really nice. So once we do that, I'm going to place my rubber dam. I will remove the crown. I will prep and I will bond everything with rubber dam. It's the best thing. It's, it's extremely comfortable. It takes time. It takes time to, to master the rubber dam. But once you master it, you know, it's like working with a, without rubber dam. You know, it's just, it's okay. So uh, I, now what I'm doing, I'm defining my margin. Very nice. Making sure that all the surface of the tooth, they're nice and polished. Once I do that, we come back and we're gonna scan once again. And now we're gonna scan the prep. Once we do that, we design it. Now, what I did here, I did copy the adjacent tooth. So I wanna have the same single the, the, the anatomy on the, on the lingual and the same shape on the front teeth. We going to mill this restoration. Again, I do not use strong materials. I love to use glass ceramic only in my front teeth. This is a Vita product too. Again, I'm working on the front teeth. I will be using uh, Total Edge. Now, even on this one, I'm, I'm not using Panavia V5. I will be using the, the Total Edge, one of the indications. So this is a clear feel. Uh, universal quick bond. I'm gonna get the crown. Place it in and then eliminate some of the composite. Tack it for three seconds. Get the floss. This is simple dentistry, simple dentistry. If you do step-by-step step and you never jump a step, these restorations, it is like, they will be there for a long time. And when I say long time, I mean long time. Patients, patients ask me, Dr. Vasquez, how long do you think is going, my, my crown is going to last? And I go, hopefully a lifetime. And, and when, I say, when they say a lifetime, they go, that long? And they go, hopefully that long. I don't know how many years you're planning to live, but if that long, it's going to be that long. Um, I always say that uh, dentistry or gold dentistry back then when they used to do lots of crowns and endless onlys made of gold, I seen crowns older than me. And by the way, I'm getting old. And then they are older than me and they look as new as they were placed yesterday. And they're older than me. So when I see gold, I'm a, I love gold. So when I'm doing my dentistry, I'm thinking it should be to that criteria that we're working with gold, protect our patient, 
do the best for them. Uh, it's not for us, it's for them. Uh, you work with them and they don't feel nothing. Uh, it's painless dentistry, uh, beautiful dentistry. And all you get from working that way is lots, lots, lots of referrals because what you want is a family and friends of your patients. So uh, all these products that I've been using, uh, you can find them on the, on the US website that is curidental.com. Uh, also, uh, you can ask the expert, okay? In this case, the expert is my good friend, Dan Clementino. He's the most knowledgeable person when it comes to his dentistry uh, with the Kurai Narotaki products. If you're thinking, um, or if you have any question when it comes to, should I get into it? And if you want the expert to answer the question, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take off myself from here this is him. That's a good looking man right there, Mr. J. Daniel Clementino. That's, uh, that's his uh, uh, email. Do yourself, get, get your camera right now. Open, uh, I'm gonna give you uh, a minute, please, because then I'm gonna give you my information. Take a picture, open your camera and, 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 and then just scan the, the QR and that will give you uh, Dan Clementino's information. And again, uh, since I've been working with Dan, you know, not only I, I'm working with lots of their products, I have learned so much about these materials that uh, understanding and knowing now uh, that these are the pioneers in a his, in a of dentistry, the science and, and all the R&D they put on, on these materials for, for the success of, of our uh, dental treatments to our patients. So, uh, Dan, you know, he, he knows very well. So again, if you have any questions, just go with him. He's, he's the best man to, to, to answer. And this is me. Uh, uh, please, uh, again, this is my information. Just take a quick uh, picture in there. If you have any questions when it comes to these materials, I'll be more than glad to answer your questions. I'm, a, I'm not a science, okay? I'm not a science. I'm just a dentist. I'm a, I'm a passionate dentist for digital technology. Uh, dentistry, and I love the, you know, uh, I love what I do today. If you take today uh, any of the technology, any of the materials that I have today in my practice, I just rather retire because you know, then dentistry is not fun. Be able to, you know, uh, deliver beautiful restorations to my patient. I think that's the thing that gives me more success uh, uh, and, and 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 satisfaction to myself because. Uh, it's, it's uh, the amount of patients that we receive because the way that we, you know, we, we make our, feel our patients in our practice and the way that we work and deliver dentistry, I, they feel it and we get a lot of referrals. So, uh, because bottom line, you know, that's what we want. You know, what, we want more patients to do more crowns, correct? And, and be able to use all these materials. So this is just, this is my information, you know, just take a picture on the QR and, and that, that's all, uh, you'll find all my, my email, my phone number, you can call me, you can friend me on Facebook, uh, any social media. Uh, if you text me, trust me, I will return uh, uh, your, your, I will message you back, okay? So uh, right now I'll be open for QA, okay? Uh, uh, if anybody has any questions, please, uh, I'm open for that, okay? Uh, Adam? Yep, are you there? let's do it, yep. Got a couple minutes here and a couple questions. Let's knock them out. Uh, first one, do you use the same Panavia essay for zirconias? Yes, all the time. Zirconia, all my zirconia, everything, all my zirconia that I use is katana, okay, in my office. Uh, when I want something stronger, then I send it to the lab. If it's a bigger, you know, spam a bridge, I will send it to the lab. I still will ask for katana, STML. If, uh, if I want to do even more aesthetic cases, I can use with katana, uh, UTML that is ultra translucent. So, so all these katanas, they're super translucent. They should be bonded. The recommendation of Kurain Arataki, it is to bond, not to cement. Can you cement with traditional you know, uh, glass ionomer? Yes, you can, yes. It is recommended, mm, okay. And I will tell you this, when Emacs was recommended to cement, we cement some Emacs and all we start having it is just having Emacs just, you know, with this catastrophic failures just broken right in the middle. So 
Katana, when I started working with Katana, when it just came out three years ago, their recommendation was to bond in 100% I bond them. So this is what I do really quick. Katana is out. Then the first thing you have to clean the intaglio, you can use a uh, steam it. As you steam, you take all the grease and everything from the intaglio, you sandblast it. Okay, once you sandblast, okay, that's it. You don't have to put no more sealing. Use the Panavia SA Universal Cement, put it on the crown. You already have the bond quick on the tooth, put them together. That crown, it will never, ever come out. Okay, and everything depends now on your, uh, on your prep. Right? If you have a nice prep, good margin, everything, then you're going to have a crown for lifetime there. And again, I, I, I don't put time in my crowns. I always say that it should be lifetime. But I always bond my, my, my circonia. Yes. Uh, when again, do you use the quick or protect? Quick or protect. Quick is going to be for all my traditional, for instance, the case that I showed that the, 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 I have a bicuspid and it's completely all gone. So I use the SC Protect because it has, a, 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 it will get rid of bacteria because it has that technology, it has that uh, chemi, uh, uh, chemical that will get rid of bacteria, correct? It also has the MDP that will help you bond into the dentin. So once you apply that in very deep areas and, and you, have, you already control the moisture and it looks very nice and dry, then use the SC Protect. Then you, I use your liners. I use my, my, my Majesty Flow as a liner, build the walls, okay? Because that, that composite is pretty strong. And even when you're uh, cutting off with a diamond, it cuts very nicely, okay? And also the other thing in the extra, you're gonna be able to see the, uh, the, the, the Majesty Flow, and then you can see the, uh, the core buildup. Uh, once we do the core buildup, we do the prep, and now we come in for cementation, then I'm going to be using the quick or the universal quick to put on, 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 on the crown, on, on the tooth, and then I submit it with the crown. So I use both of them on the same tooth in the different scenario. One is to bond it into the tooth structure, and the other one is to use it for the crown cementation. All right, and then how much occlusal contacts do you leave on crowns? would you leave even contacts or make them lighter than the other teeth? The contacts, okay. Ah, wow. Um, I do have already my software because I designed everything on the Cerex software. When I have my occlusive contacts, I do have it at minus 75 microns. That's how I have it. And then on the, on the mill process, we have another a reduction that we call the occlusal offset that I have it at minus 175 microns. So I have a total of 250 microns. So it's pretty much nothing, correct? So uh, in, in, in my software, when I see the contact from the occlusal, uh, if I, I, I need to have a good buckle impression done, Okay, so I have, I asked the patient to completely bite down hard so I can have evenly all the contacts. So when I see in my arch, all the contacts are like green, little yellows around the areas and I do my crown, I want to make sure that my contacts and the clues are they look almost the same, identical to the rest of the arch. That's how I do it. Um, now, when it comes to the reduction, um, uh, how much reduction I do on the clues, it depends on the material that I'm going to be using. All right. I think that is a wrap for tonight. So thank you, Dr. Vasquez, for your presentation and the passion. And of course, thank you to Karari for sponsoring tonight's webinar. If anyone does have additional questions about this topic, please feel free to email us at webinars at henryshine.com and we'll route that accordingly. Also, if anyone is interested in attending future Henry Shine webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. Today's webinar was recorded, so we'll get that out to everyone within one week of today. Thanks for joining us and see you back here soon. And thank you for, uh, for spending this evening with us. Thank you, Adam. Thank you.